Uh, with that, we come to the final session, which is uh, hosted by none other than Mr. Rajesh Rao from uh, IGDC. Uh, this is what does the future for Web3 in India look like? We've heard the whole gambit and now it's the finale, the last session. Rajesh, over to you and the panelists, which is Rajan from Jet Synthesis. We have um, Sai from MPL. No, you just have fun. Just make sure you don't stitch. Yeah. And Nitesh from Nazara. Good evening, everybody. Been a good day? Yes, no? Good day, yes? Okay. Good. Uh, glad that we could do this uh, very focused conference in Bangalore. I think this is the first time in many years we're doing something in Bangalore. So I'm, uh, I'm personally happy about that, being from Bangalore myself. Uh, very, very hot topic. And we've got three um, leaders of billion dollar and, and above entities. Please come on stage. Rajan from Jet Synthesis, Nitish, and Sai from MPL. Come on, guys. Okay, just um, this panel is um, high level looking at a little bit of crystal gazing perhaps uh, as to what could be the potential opportunities of Web3 for, for India. Because, you know, obviously uh, it is a very new topic. The fact that so many people have turned up for a conference shows that there's so much curiosity. And of course, we, we are reading about Web3 um, almost daily now. There isn't a day that goes without an article on Web3, even in mainstream newspapers. So um, I'm a bit old school, so it took, has been taking me a while to wrap my head around it. I've been asking all these uh, gentlemen here, um, what is the hype and the fuss all about? So why don't we get started? And so what is, why is Web3 so exciting? And, 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 and and I would like to ask you, uh, from your perspective as people who are running somewhat mature businesses, large businesses, uh, so, so coming from the way you stand, uh, how do you see it? Let's start with you, Sai. Okay. Firstly, thank you for having me here. It's been a long time since we've met in person, so it's, it's always good to meet in person. I think uh, the, the thing about uh, Web3 that, uh, or should I say, thing about blockchain, and uh, that is very, very exciting for gaming in specific is that it now fundamentally gives identity to an asset. And gaming has always been about assets. For example, every game that you play, you want to buy some virtual goods, you want to have some virtual goods, and so on and so forth. Suddenly, the virtual good that you have has an identity, and it is verifiable. So for example, tomorrow, in a game, the game developer just can't wake up and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to make 50,000 more assets. It's going to be, if there are 10 assets, there are only 10 assets. It's, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's incredible. That's almost as true as saying the surface area of land on planet Earth is going to be constant. And once something becomes constant, it automatically has value. And yeah, and that's the reason why it's, it has so much importance and so much value in gaming, because overnight, all these assets are going to have value. And I think they can eventually be traded. And when they get traded, there's more value to be generated. And yeah, and that's, that's the reason why I believe it's just incredible. Yeah. So I'll ask this question that I've already asked you uh, in person. What is to stop the big games, of course, which have millions of users, from making a new version, sure. which is blockchain, and NFT enabled, it should be an iteration for them, right? In theory, there should be nothing that's stopping anyone from doing anything, in theory. But uh, I think there are two reasons why any large game today uh, would, would, would struggle, or for that matter, wouldn't think of going that route. The first reason is, you know, there's this thing which I was telling you also, like, you know, your margin is my opportunity. Today, a big game developer can very easily sell an unlimited number of assets in their game without any audit trail. What it means is that if I'm a game developer, 
I can print 10 million assets, 20 million assets, and I can sell all of them. There's no audit trail, right? So I can mint as much money as I want to. 30% of course goes to Google, the 70 comes to me. Now, suddenly you're telling this game developer, hey man, you can only mint that many. You can only do that many. And suddenly you're telling the game developer, you will have to make secondary revenues in trading. That essentially means they're gonna leave a lot of revenue on the table for the end customer to actually make, make from, right? Now, some people are gonna see the long-term picture there and say, okay, we'll jump. I'm sure they're doing that. Some guys will take a little time and, and they might take a little longer, but eventually they'll have to do it. It's like free to play, right? When free to play also started, everybody was like, oh, this is a stupid thing. Why, why are you giving away your game for free? But eventually everyone said that this is how it, it needs to happen. The last reason, and I think this is the main reason why people don't do anything, it's inertia, right? It's because once you're a company... But inertia got, has killed many, uh, many of course, a company. And that's the reason, that's the reason <laughs> things die, right? That's, like why, it's the, that's yeah. why the opportunity. And, yeah, and that's where the opportunity is. That's the reason why every 10 years there's a brand new company doing great things. So I think that's my reason why. Cool. Uh, Nitish, what is your take on Web3 and how do you see it? Yeah, you're a listed company now. You have... Uh, quarterly results to take care of, stock price to take care of. So from your perspective, how do you see this playing out? Sure, Rajesh. So for us, you know, we've been around for so long now in India, 22 years. We, I think we we were born in Web 0.3 and we've seen the <laughs> journey to Web 3, right? And uh, obviously with every changing technology and, you know, disruption, there are challenges thrown up and opportunities thrown up. and. A company like ours cannot, uh, you know, not catch on to such technologies because you stand the risk of becoming a dinosaur otherwise. From an India market perspective, monetization on games especially has been a challenge. Uh, even in a freemium model, except for a few top crossing games, uh, the IAP conversions have been very low, the eCPMs have been fairly low, so it's not easy to monetize in India. And I think uh, the whole Web3 is uh, providing a completely different set of monetization opportunities with higher ARPO potential. So it's something we are very quite excited about. We are, as I was saying, taking the jump on some of our key titles as well. Uh, and we'll see how that uh, kind of pans out. But yeah, exciting times, I think. Great. Um, your opening comments on Web3 and uh, you, you know, you, you're not just in games. I mean, I know you come from a, a family which has uh, several businesses in several different countries. So you you kind of have a slightly broader, perhaps, view on this. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Rajesh. And firstly, thank you for inviting me to be here. And always a pleasure to be in a community that I believe is going to shape the future of the world. Okay. I mean, when I look at the Web3 and what it's going to translate into, and you know where you see the Gen Zs and you see the next generation of people and how they're going to spend their time and where they're going to live, I think those worlds are going to be shaped by the game development community globally. So I am, you know, out of all, like what you said, we're part of so many different businesses, we've looked at all of that, but that virtual world that is, you know, going to be defined by Web3, which really to me is, is, is as transformative as the internet was you know, and what it did to, you know, the world in 20 years, right? I mean, if you see 20 years starting from a Y2K problem for the services industry to the product-led energy that we have today out of a country like India, I think Web3 is exactly that because, you know, you have ownership in a world uh, which uh, was never existent before, right? So today a part of your wealth, a part of your real economy, a part of your life, a part of your earning, a part of your play and therefore, you know, why gaming companies are most suited to be able to leverage this is because, you know, the initial wave was, you know, you go there to make some money and you, you, you hedge and you, you know, you're kind of speculating. And then you go that play to earn moving to play and earn, right? So you're engaging people through fun and then also giving them opportunity to earn livelihoods and what that is going to open up in the next five or 10 years, I don't think we can even imagine sitting here, right? But there is going to be an opportunity there, and I think it's game developers who have a first opportunity to go and create those worlds. What those worlds will look like, how much of that will really translate into what can be, you know, creating significant value uh, will be decided, of course, uh, by the people who engage with those worlds. 
and therefore what we offer in those worlds is really going to be important. But we see that in the West, you know, and you know, the whole Facebook's meta uh, strategy of getting immersive in 3D worlds will take time in India. So again, I feel like many other worlds or many other, you know, technologies that the world has led, its adaptation in a country like India will be different. You know, it's the same thing which happened with mobiles, which happened with smartphones, which happened with gaming. In many places, we've played catch up, right? Even AI, blockchain as technologies. But I think on this one front, if we are able to optimize and we are able to create experiences that will also link to livelihoods of people, I think we have a massive opportunity here. So I am exceedingly bullish on what this would be. And really, you know, the way you put it, a lot of our old world you know, will will probably reside, but it will reside in this in this new you know metaverse. So actually, we did a, a a new unveiling of our identity, you know, which is our jetverse, which creates you know all the things that we are in, but you know, giving it an, a life in the virtual world. And we believe that the first life will be there, and what we do here will be second. So it's a massive shift in transition, the way I see it. But how it plays out is going to take time. But I definitely believe that the game developers, people who are sitting in this room, have a large opportunity to be able to shape that world. So I'll stay with you and then we'll, we'll go back this way now. So because you brought up the point about the opportunity for India and this, our topic is about opportunity for India. So what is it that we can do differently with Web3 as an opportunity that we have perhaps not done in the past with the other opportunities that have, like you said, we have always played catch up on on many fronts, but what is it that we can do differently with Web3? So, you know, we have a very large community of young people, right? I mean, the gamer community, if we've seen one thing that we heard, 17% of global downloads of games, you know, are in India, people are engaged, we have a way to engage people, right? Now, how do we convert that? And we also know that, you know, we are a frugal economy, people, hard to get people to spend. But, you know, if you're able to make a gamer, a producer first, or a way to earn some livelihood, and then make him a consumer, where he's then spending. You know, I think that, that economics of saying, hey, you earn like this, and then you spend like this, right, can actually be shaped up. And I think you have to build a business that demonstrates the need for capital too, right, and scale. So I think, like, to, to add to Sai's point, right, you need to really be able to have a very thorough model on which you are basing your hypothesis. And that's what I said earlier, you know, having that focus, being able to predict that and then walk the talk, I think is, is what then drives better and more capital. And I think it's, uh, it, it's important, but you know, it's, it's, it's important to again, therefore, figure out what is the kind of capital that also works best for you and your kind of business. So there are many aspects to capital. I don't think in one minute we can discuss that, but, uh, but it's, a, it's a something that I think each entrepreneur needs to go deeply into and understand better, you know, uh, as a part of their overall entrepreneurship uh, journey. That, that said, uh, I think there's a lot of capital available now in the market, uh, both for game, early stage gaming in India, uh, I think a lot of domestic capital is also available, a lot of HNIs are looking at this space, writing small checks. So I think that's one aspect. And the second aspect is even for Web3, there's a lot of capital available. So Web3 plus gaming, I think capital should be easily available. Uh, you need to be able to tap the right uh, resources. A uh, lot of now angel funds and all are there you can approach. Uh, angel clubs are there which you can approach. If you're starting off for a smaller check size, 50,000, $100,000. In fact, I sometimes think it's a reverse problem these days because Every, especially in Web3, right? Everybody makes one small deck, one light paper, not even white paper, and starting valuation is $10 million. And they're like, boss, next week I'll decide, karo, nahi toh, round is over. So <laughs> this, is, this is at least what I'm experiencing as an angel investor. So <laughs> uh, True. I think, uh, you know, I, I tell startups, you know, that the best way to validate your idea is, is to go sell. Is to go and meet a few in, uh, investors because they have been in this for a while. They know when an idea has legs and uh, when an idea is, you know, they have a better sense on that. So it's a good it's a good idea to go and pitch your uh, startup to 
and your idea to, to investors because that will help you to clear your mind if there are things that you're not thinking uh, you know, in the right direction. All right. Uh, that's it for the day. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I have just one announcement to make is that our main conference, the IGDC, that is finally returning this year, 3rd and 4th of November in Hyderabad. So, yeah. so, so we look forward to seeing you all there and we will build on this, uh, uh, you know, conference which was very focused on blockchain and Web3 but we will have a lot more. Uh, that's, that's going to be a much broader event and uh, look forward to seeing you all there. And I would now like to call uh, March to, uh, to offer the vote of thanks on behalf of uh, IGDC. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.